The primary function of the exhortation in our liturgy, the way we think about it is this is the on-ramp to the confession of sin. So we, we as pastors try to lay out what God calls us to do so that we can then confess to God what we have failed to do so that we can receive mercy because of what Christ has done. That's how this fits. This morning, I just want to give you an image and then a few exhortations. The image comes from the book of Genesis. It's when God was speaking to Cain and said, sin is crouching at your door. Its desire is for you, but you must rule over it. That's the image. Sin is like a a predator, like a monster crouching on your porch, desiring to possess you, to own you, to master you, to devour you. That's the image. Sin is a predator, a monster on your porch desiring to devour you. But let me just get more specific because if the New Testament is any example, sometimes you just need a good list of sins. Here's what's crouching at your door. Okay, so I want you to listen here. Listen for the monster on your porch. Envy and rivalry. Covetousness, meaning wanting what other people have so bad that it makes you sad. Discontentment. Grumbling. Ingratitude for God's kindness to you. Sexual immorality. Pursuing sexual gratification outside of marriage, whether through pornography or fornication or adultery. Drunkenness. Gluttony. Unrighteous anger, hatred, malice, bitterness. Gossip, slander, malicious speech. Cruelty. Cowardice. Laziness and sloth. Disobedience to parents. Just plain old selfishness. Lying. Deceit. Either believing lies, spreading lies, or both. Pride. Haughtiness. Boasting. Self-righteousness. Sin crouches at your door and its desire is for you to possess you, to devour you. So here's the exhortation. First, if that monster is still crouching on your porch, beware. Don't make peace with the monster. Don't coddle your sinful desires. Don't nurse it and try to befriend it. Like, don't secretly feed it scraps under the table. You can't carry fire next to your chest and expect not to get burned. You cannot raise a dragon in your house and expect not to get eaten. Now, second, I expect that for some of you, the monster already pounced. You've fallen into the ditch. Maybe if you're honest, you even jumped. You've presented your members, your eyes, your ears, your mouth, your belly, your hands, your feet, your body, your mind. You've presented your members as instruments of unrighteousness, as tools of sin. You've committed great evil. So, don't rationalize your sin. Don't excuse the dragon. Don't let explanations of sin become excuses for sin. And finally, don't bow up. Don't turn the sin of error and folly and passion of a moment into high-handed, stiff-necked rebellion. Don't double down. Don't make God break your back because you won't bow. Don't spurn His kindness and don't hide. Don't wallow in ungodly grief alone. Come out into the light because some of you are terrified that someone is going to find out. I have some bad news. He already knows, and he's on his way. And I have some good news. He already knows, and he's on his way. But I'm getting ahead of myself. This reminds us, that image, that list, those exhortations remind us of our need to confess our sins. 
So go with me to the Lord now. Our Father in God, we live among a wicked people, a nation that massages and coddles sinful desires, rationalizes and excuses unrighteous actions. Rather than making war on ungodliness, we make peace with all manner of evil. Indeed, we call good evil and evil good, and we mock at virtue and godliness. We suppress truth and unrighteousness, and we expect you not to see, not to act. Our nation's presumption is a form of idolatry. We are stiff-necked, hard-hearted, high-handed in our rebellion, and this is a great evil. More than that, Lord, as your covenant people, we too have followed the passions of our flesh and been led away by deceitful desires. We have gone along to get along. We may not parade our sins like the world, but we nurse and coddle them in secret, expecting your blessing while withholding our obedience and faith. Forgive us, O Lord, we pray, for giving sin a foothold among us and in us. Forgive our compromises, our errors, our follies, and our willful sins. Turn our hearts back to you in sincere repentance, we pray. And we know, Lord, that if we in the church regard sin in our own midst or in our own hearts, our prayers will be ineffectual, and so we confess our individual sins to you now. Father, when we loved the darkness, your holy light was hateful to us. We fled from you. Your, your knowledge of our sinful hearts was bad news. But when by your Spirit, Lord, we turn back to you, we find that it was goodness and mercy pursuing us all along. You are not another monster seeking to devour, but a great Savior who delivers us from the world, the flesh, and the devil. Thank you, O oh Lord, for Jesus, who died for our sins, was raised for our justification. Help us now, Lord, to walk in the newness of life that he offers us by his spirit. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Please stand for the assurance of pardon. Church, you have confessed your sins. Now hear the good news. When we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Therefore, to all who humbly seek the mercy of God, I say to you, in Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven.